Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> this is not Bible study. This is a training session. Religion is over with. Amen. Everyone say I'm a warrior. I'm, a warrior. I'm in Holy Ghost boot camp. Holy Ghost. Officers training school. Officers training. Amen. Amen. Jesus never came to bring religion. Amen. He came to expose it. That's why he's called the commander-in-chief, because he's the commander-in-chief of a military. This is a military operation. And believe it or not, every one of you volunteered to come to this earth. Hello? But the moment you were conceived, you forgot everything. See, the word says that you and I were with the Lord before we came here. We probably even volunteered when he said, who's going to go for me? We all went, I will. He said, now look, when you get here, you're going to forget where you came from. But you're going to need to get born again to get reconnected to me. And then memory will start to come back in the area through my word and through my presence. That's why we are more than conquerors. So we're no longer e uh, temporary. We're eternal now. Amen? So we belong to an eternal army. Listen, we all had to go through hell to get to heaven. You know what I'm saying? There's a battle going on. The problem is, is when you and I were born into this realm, we were deceived and lied to. Even some of the churches we went to deceived us and lied to us. Not because they did it on purpose, because they were deceived and lied to, and they just continued to pass it on. That's why not enough people are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and casting out devils. It's all scriptural. Jesus is the same yesterday and tomorrow, amen? amen. Nothing's changed. Only man's interpretation of the word because they try to interpret through carnal mind and without the Holy Spirit, you'll never get this. It'll be like going to a school and reading a, a book. These are eternal words. They are prophetic words. When you speak them, they're life-giving and life-changing. Things change. So this is your training manual. Amen? Amen? It's a training manual. For what? For you to learn how to fight, learn the strategies of the enemy, and be connected so you can be a part of the kingdom and expand it. Listen, we're in a war right now like there's never been. We are in a time and season right now where you see everything being exposed because God's divine intervention is exposing what has been done in the last other eight years by an Obamanite. It was wicked and evil. It promoted wickedness and evil, and it was witchcraft. If we would have had another four more years of that, this country would have been taken out. Amen. That's why God sent Trump to blow the Trump. He's blowing the trumpet now. See, the Trump is associated with gathering. It's associated with war. Now God's using this man to expose he is not a politician. He's not bought out by the one world order. In fact, you can't buy him out. In fact, he gives his paychecks away. His only interest is for this country and to get rid of the swamp where all the reptilian creatures are and establish God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven because we are entering the greatest revival of the world in history. And you are here alive, a part of it. So you got to get trained up. You got to learn or you'll get burned. No matter what you've gone through. Every one of us gone through. But everyone say go through. So you're still not there then, right? That means you're going through it. We all went through. I've been in prison, addicted. You name it, I've done it. Ain't too much I haven't done. Thank God. He's rescued me through every single one. Everybody has a story where they've been. Now let's get a story where we're going. Amen. 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 Let's turn things around. It doesn't matter where you've been. You're just going to use that for God's glory now. Amen. Amen. Would you turn to the book of Job? It's called Job. I'll never forget after I got saved and somebody turned me on to the word. And they said, man, you ever read about Job? I said, man, there's an employment section in the Bible. I knew it had everything. 
Job chapter 1. Hallelujah. Training for reigning. Glory. Job chapter 1. So let me share something before we even get started because this is just a reminder. There's a difference between management and freedom. Amen. Hello? Amen. Too many people are in management and not freedom. Calling themselves Christians, but they're still trying to manage their demons. Amen? Amen. We want to be free. Jesus came to set the captives free. But there is a process of it. There's a process of freedom. And he brings us through that. And one of the ways of getting, starting to get free is you must sow. You must sow in the spirit. That means you've got to sing your way through and decree your way through. Because we live in a matrix. Anybody ever seen that movie? It's a reality. You want the red pill or the blue pill? Hallelujah. Take it, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1. Listen, we're not religious, amen? amen? There's nothing worse than a straight Christian. We should be all drunk, all the time. And if you're miserable, don't let anybody, don't tell nobody you know Jesus. Go home, get in the prayer closet, get rid of your demon, get filled with the Holy Ghost, then you'll have joy and you'll have peace, then go out and tell people about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it together. Because you got to speak your way out. Amen. There was a man in the land of Oz, whose, Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Hold on a second. There's a multiple things about this man. It says... That he was blameless. He was blameless. You know why he was blameless? Because he was connected to the will of God. It says he was upright. In other words, God was pleased with him. And it said that he feared God. He honored, he respected him, and he reverenced God. <laughs> Think about how many people don't do that today. And call themselves Christians. And don't do that. That is not Christ-like. To fear God is Christ-like. And it says, and he shunned evil. He departed from evil. He rebuked evil. He didn't want anything to associate you with it. Does everybody see that? How many know God wants to do that with me and you? Amen. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people on the east. In other words, he was a billionaire. And his sons would go and feast in their houses each on his appointed day and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them. And he would raise, rise early in the morning. I want to say that again. He would rise early in the morning. In other words, he was seeking the kingdom of God first. He would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. In other words, he was sacrificing animals because he had so many cattle. By sacrificing the animals, it was shedding blood. God acknowledges that arena in the area of sanctification. Blood sanctifies, not human blood. This was offered to the Lord through animal blood. Demonic forces like human blood. That's why people, did you ever hear of cutters, people that cut themselves? Amen? People don't even realize that when you get a tattoo, you're actually shedding blood. You're cutting yourself. And it brings a curse on somebody. That's why you need to repent for it and break it off. Hallelujah. 
Okay, so he rose early in the morning. He set burnt offering. I mean, he offered up sacrifices according to the number of all. So Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, did, Job did this what? Regularly. So he continued to do this. What did it bring? It brought him a hedge of protection. It was a hedge of protection. What Job was doing was causing a restricted area for the powers of darkness. Does everybody get it? What was it called? A restricted area. Okay, let's go a little further. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, which are known as angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from, who, from where did you come? So Satan answered the Lord, and he said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on the earth. So he was going, coming up and down. He was going all over. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Now God was getting ready to use Job to slap Satan. And he said, there is none like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Job, do, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a what? Hedge around him. Um, he made a restricted, or there was a sign that was said restricted. Amen? Around his household, around all that he has on every side, you have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord, and he attacked. The first thing he attacked was Job's cattle, so that Job could not sacrifice and keep that hedge of protection. And then he had access to everything else. But at the end result, Job never cursed God. And God returned to him double everything that was stolen. How many of y'all want double back? Amen. Amen. Well, it can happen. Praise God. So again, here was an area. It was called a restricted area that God had set around Job. It was a sanctified area. Sanctified is associated with sanctified unto God, keeping it clean so that a hedge protection or a restricted area can be set around you. Now, one of the things that's always happening, we're always trying to take territory and ground. Amen? That's territory. As servants of the Lord, as warriors of the Lord, we are fighting for territory. We are fighting for spiritual territory because there are territorial demonic forces in the heavenlies. And most people who would call themselves Christians don't even know how to fight. They don't even know how to pull down principalities. They don't know anything about this. They think they're just going to church and giving a few bucks here and there is going to get them home. Wrong. In fact, there's a sign out in front of God's throne room. It says the only way in is by producing righteousness and justice. Anything else will not get you in. Whether you claim to be a Christian or not. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Ex Exodus chapter 3. So these areas of sanctification are restricted for the devil. They restrict him out. Exodus chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Amen. So we need to have a sign on us that says restricted area. Amen. And there's a way to do that. Exodus 3 in verse 1. 1 through 6, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when, he, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off of your feet, for the place where you stand is what? Holy ground. Was it sanctified? Was it hedged of protection? Yes. The only reason why Moses was able to access that is because God invited him. Anyone else try to, he would have cooked. Amen? Does everybody get it? It was holy ground. It was restricted from evil. The only way went in was to be invited. Hebrews chapter 9. Restricted areas is tonight's. Hebrew. She brew tonight. Praise God. My wife brought me a coffee. <laughs> I brew this morning. So it was Hebrew. Hebrew 9. In verse 1, verse 1 through 10. Is everybody there? Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. See, one of the things that the Lord asked Moses to do was build a tabernacle. The purpose of the tabernacle had three chambers. Outer court, holy place, most holy place. And the ark of the covenant was in the most holy place. It was a sanctified place. It was restricted to all man. Only a priest could enter in through ordinances. No demonic forces could get in there, nothing. In fact, when the priest did his duty, if he messed up, he died. It was a sanctuary where God was going to meet with man. In verse 2, for the tabernacle was prepared, the first part, in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid with all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that ha had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, which was the Ten Commandments. And above it was the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. And of these things we cannot speak in detail. Now, when these things had been thus prepared, the priests always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing services, which were rituals. But in the second part, the high priest went alone once a year. And if he didn't do what he was supposed to do, they used to tie a rope around his ankle and a bell. If he missed one of the ordinances, when he got in front of that ark, he died. You would hear him fall. Boom. The bell would ring. Ding, ding. Boom. And they'd pull him out. And they go, next. Next, priest. You ready? <laughs> that was called the fear of God then. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again, number six. Now, when these things had been thus prepared, the priests always went in to the first part of the tabernacle performing the services. But in the second part, the high priest went in alone once a year. Not without what? Blood. So he had to sprinkle blood on the Ark of the Covenant seven times. Because seven means complete and perfect. And for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. That was the Old Covenant, the Old Testimony. 
It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the services perfect in regard to the conscience. Concerned only with foods and drinks and various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. But Christ, when he came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of heifer sprinkled the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, it's very powerful. That's why when, the, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was ripped. It allowed man to have access. I want you to look at the tabernacle as the eternal port. It is the only way home. There is no other exit port. Only the tabernacle of God can you go home. Does everybody get it? That is the only way home. There's no other way home. You must, everyone must go through the tabernacle of God. It's called the eternal port. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he is the tabernacle. Does everybody get it? That's, he says, no man come to the Father except for through Jesus. There is no other way home. No matter what you think, no matter what you believe, or no matter what you've been taught, you cannot make it home. You can't. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people who thought that just because they've been praying the rosary and all of this other foolishness and following all kinds of religion and new age, and they've been a good person, that they're going home. No, you won't. Only righteous make it home. Not good. Only righteous. And who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen? Is everybody okay? So the tabernacle of God was a restricted area for all men unless you were invited by God. Only the high priest obeying the uh, sacrificial rituals of sprinkling of the blood had access until Jesus came and paid the price when he created his own blood and he created his own body. He was the offering for all mankind. But there's something that had to happen. He said, nothing can happen until you repent from your sins, deny yourself, fight, follow, and you'll make it home. Is everybody okay? So Jesus paid the price for me and you. That's when the veil was ripped from the top and bottom. So that all man can have access to the Father through the Son. Not through any saint, not through anything else, but through Jesus. That's it. Amen? Only through Jesus. Jesus is God in the natural, in the flesh. God took a part of himself, called himself son, and named him Jesus. That's why when they came and saw Jesus, Jesus said to them, if you see me, you see the Father. Because him and the Father are one. And Psalm 91 So the tabernacle is restricted to all sinners and evil. That's why you must be washed by the blood of the lamb to access it. It is a restricted area. Psalm 91. In verse 1, he who dwells in the secret place of the what? Most high. That is the third chamber of the tabernacle. It is called the Most High, the Holy of Holies. It is the tabernacle. He said, he who dwells in that place, now you and I have access to dwell there. I'm not going to talk about how you get there. We'll talk about that another time. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The shadow of the Almighty is the shadow of the cherubim where their wings are stretched, because when the glory of God would shine, or light would shine through, there would be a shadow. But when God's light shines, there ain't, there's no shadows. 
He, and it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Look at what happens when you abide in the secret place of the Most High. Verse 3, let's speak it. It says, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the prevalence of pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor pe pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at news noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Why will it not come near you? Because it is a restricted area where no sin or evil can come in. None. You got to have high clearance. It's high security clearance. If you don't have high security clearance, you ain't in there. And that high security clearance comes from being washed by the blood of the Lamb with repentance, being connected to the presence of God and aligned with His Word. Acts 17. All glory. Acts 17. Aren't you tired of being lied to, being deceived? Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Acts 17 and verse 22. <clears throat> is everybody there? Is anybody there? Amen. Praise God. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all these things you are very religious. He realized that there was religion, but there was no connection or relationship. Has everybody got it? There's a lot of people playing religion, but no relationship. They don't know him. Now think about this. If people really knew him, would they do what they do? No. That's why you know them by their fruit. You'll know whether somebody really knows the Lord. How many of all people heard, yeah, I know Jesus, but they're out there huffing or smoking and drinking and lusting and lying and they don't know Jesus. They may know of him, but if you really know him, those things aren't happening then people are just religious. Verse 23. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and what? Boundaries of their dwelling. In other words, these are areas where there's restriction. You know, it's amazing that when, in the Old Testament, when they went to go conquer and take a land, they usually built walls to protect what they've taken. See, so you and I need to do the same thing spiritually. Amen. We need to attack spiritually, take territory, possess it, claim it, and then put a hedge of protection around it. Like your temple, your home, everything else that you have. Again, he made them from one blood from every nation of men dwelling on the face of the earth and has, pre, and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwelling so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each and every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, so also some of your poets have said, for we are also his what? His offspring. We are the offspring. Boundaries, borders, 
Those are restricted areas. They keep the enemies out. Amen? Again, that's why they build walls. That's why Trump wants to build a wall around the United States. Hello? But only the enemy doesn't want the wall built. When people begin to get this, it's like, hello? Matthew 12. Matthew 12. <clears throat> verse 43. Matthew 12, verse 43. Let's speak it. When an unclean spirit, which is called a demon, goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty. Empty. In other words, maybe the garbage was taken out. It says, empty, swept, and put in order. The problem was he wasn't filled with the Spirit. Amen. So he saw it empty, swept, and put in order. And the demon goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Why? Because there was no hedge of protection. It was not restricted. It, the body, the temple was not restricted. This is supposed to be the tabernacle now of the Holy Spirit. Your temple is supposed to be, once you get filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, this temple is supposed to be the Spirit the temple of the Holy Spirit. It should have a restricted sign on it where the enemy cannot access. There's things that allow an access. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 25, he gives us a few areas which open the door and destroy the uh, restricted sign. The enemy comes and steals the restricted sign. In verse 25, therefore put away what? Lying. Lying, Lying will, will nullify re restriction. It will nullify the protection. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't what? Sin. So sin will definitely do it. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. devil. Don't give place to the devil. Let him who stole will steal and open a door. Yes. Steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good, that he may have something to give him who is need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Hello. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve, Grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness. Bitterness. How many of y'all know unforgiveness? You can't have protection. Amen. Bitterness, you lose protection. Wrath, anger, clamor, evil, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. It says, make no place for the devil. When you shut the door in your life to the enemy, you will maintain a restricted area. Amen? Go to 2 Corinthians 6.
you know, think about this. How, look at how many times hackers, you know those hackers that hack websites? What are they hacking? They're hacking a restricted area. Well, the enemy loves to hack. He's a hacker from way back. He likes to hack restricted areas. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Are you ready? Amen. Do not be what? Unevenly. Unevenly yoked with unbelievers. The word believe means to what? Follow. So even though a Christian says they're a Christian, but they're really not following, then God calls them a liar. Because the word believe means to follow. Amen? Amen? Well, I've been a Christian 30 years. Yeah, I still go to the bar. I still do this. I still do that. I still gamble. Still watch porn. But God knows my heart. Yeah. Amen. He knows your heart all right, homie. And you are disconnected from the presence of God and eternal life. Amen. But I'm a Christian. Uh-uh. The word believe means to follow. He says a lot of people say, I believe. But they don't follow. Then he says, well, you're a liar. That's reality. Amen? So don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with what? Lawlessness. And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the what? Temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell with you. I will walk among them. I will be your God. And you will, shall be my people if you do this. The word therefore means if you do this. If you come out from among them. Come on, among what? What do you mean? The, w living according to the secular world. Just because the government says it's okay to do it, doesn't mean God says it's okay to Amen. do it. Amen. Just because the government promotes same-sex marriage doesn't mean God does. Just because the government promotes abortion doesn't mean God does. Just because the world promotes uh, abom uh, abominations and, and uh, perversion and all shacking and sex outside of marriage doesn't mean God does. He says, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is unclean. Any, what is unclean is anything that God disapproves of. Amen? And then I'll be a father to you. I will receive you and I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So there's that area where you, gotta, you and I got to come out from among them. Why? So that you can, I can have a restricted area. Amen? Don't touch, don't agree with the things that will nullify any restricted, restricted areas in you. Because remember, the devil seeks whom he may devour. He's looking access. Right? You know, addiction is not a disease, it's a demon. Amen. Amen. It's a demon. Nicotine is a demon. Does everybody get it? All of these drugs are, they're all accursed items. Draw demonic activity. People have a curse that in their home. They don't even know what the heck's going on. Oh, hallelujah. Look at Exodus 12 for a minute. Exodus. We should be creating restricted areas. Exodus chapter 12. Where it says, no trespassing. Restricted area. Verse 12. Exodus 12, 12. Now the Lord was about to loose the Israelites from Pharaoh, who was a Nephilim. And... Uh, 
So he sent plagues to them. And the, one of the last plagues he was going to bring on was to take the firstborn. You know, Pharaoh thought he was a god. He actually believed it. It came down the family line. Nephilim race. In verse 12, And the Lord said, I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage. Both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And so this shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast of the Lord throughout all your generations. You shall keep it as the feast by an everlasting ordinance. It's called the Feast of Passover, because that's when he passed over. So the Lord had them kill a lamb. They got his stops. They dipped it in the blood and they put it on the lentils of the door. And only those who were instructed by Moses, because Moses was connected to the presence of God, amen, put it on the, on the door. And they didn't, no plague, no, nothing came in. Why? Because it put a hedge of protection. That's why it's good to apply the blood of Jesus on your home. But of course, if you have your cursed items in your home and you're committing sin, that ain't going to work. Amen. Amen? So now we speak it. In the Old Testament, they used to have to do it because it's now the ministry of the Spirit. So now we speak it. I apply the blood of Jesus all the time on my vehicle when I travel. Apply the blood of Jesus on my home and everything else. Why? Because the Father sees the blood. The blood of his son that was shed. And a hedge of protection is there. But again, if you got accursed items and you're committing sin, well, then it ain't going to work. Amen? Amen? 2 Corinthians 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. That's why he says, come out from among them. And he warns us also. He says, man, be careful. Be careful who you hang with. Evil company corrupts good habits. Associations will bring impartations. Be careful what you watch, what you hear, especially music. Man, music. Remember, Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe for God. This secular music releases this demonic. Do you know that before they released music in the world, that they put it in a cauldron where 12 witches call up all these demons and they curse the music so that when people hear it, demonic forces enter them and they go out and buy more. Think about that. That's why you better be careful what music you listen to. Boy, y'all got quiet on that one. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3. Is everybody there? Yeah. Hallelujah. For though we what? Walk in the physical realm or flesh, we do not war according to the fleshly realm or a physical realm. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but are what? Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. A stronghold is a memory lie. That means you've touched and agreed with someone who called you something. It's called a memory lie. Or you're an addict. You know, did you ever hear the saying, once an addict, always an addict? Amen. That's nothing but a stronghold. That's a lie. Amen. I was an addict for 20 years, but I haven't been an addict for over who knows how long. 30 like that? I don't know. It's been a while. Praise God. I'm addicted to God's presence, though. Well, that's why he's called the Most High. Amen? Man, I love to get high. He 
paid the price for me. Amen. Amen. So we can get in God's presence and get high as a kite. Amen. <laughs> and stay joyful and fun and right. And not do anything stupid. Amen. No hangover. Didn't cost anything. He paid it for it. And then there's benefits. There's healing. Got a full insurance plan. I got a life insurance, health insurance, benefits, everything. Just step in the kingdom. All right, so we're going to pull down strongholds, memory lies, things that we've been lied to and agreed with. Casting down what? Arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every what? Every what? Thought. Thought. Into captivity, to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So you got to be careful of thoughts. You got to ask yourself, who told me that? Where'd you come from? Do you ever get discouraged? Disappointed? Oppressed? Do you ever wonder who told you that? Amen. God didn't tell you that. He said, I came to bring you life and life abundantly. I came to bring you peace, joy, and righteousness. I'm going to bring you through this thing. Even though you made a stupid mistake, I'm with you. Now just grab hold of me. Repent and let's go. Amen? Amen? Get up. Get your eyes off yourself. Get them on me, he says. Amen. Oh, glory. In Romans 12. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Romans 12. Training for reigning. You need to pull out that Holy Ghost bazooka and start kicking butt. Amen. Romans 12, verse 2. I think, yeah. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Do not be what? Conformed to the world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means your thoughts or your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, and imaginations. Renew them, what? According to the ways of Christ, his character and divine nature. Renewing your mind that you may prove that which uh, uh, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewing your mind brings to bring rem to up to remembrance. How do you do that? It's decree in the word. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Remember, as the ministry of the Spirit, the word Spirit means breath. You got to sow your way out. How do you sow your way out? You speak your way out. That's why we have those prayer booklets, those penetrating prayer. How do they penetrate? Not by sitting there and reading it. It penetrates by you speaking it. It's got to penetrate this realm into the other realm that you don't see, where all the influences. It's got to go from the temporary realm into the eternal realm. 1 Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. What you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. <clears throat> Let's speak it together. Because what you sow is what you reap. Is everybody there? Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification. What is sanctification associated with? Being a place of what? Restricted. Your sanctification brings restriction. To who? The enemy. Somebody get this. Your sanctification, your separation, it's a holy place. 
After you drive out all the demonic forces and all the other stuff, it is sanctified. It brings a protection to you. Now, sanctification represents restriction from evil. Is everybody okay? For Verse 3. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification that you should obtain from what? Sexual immorality. That means mar uh, sex outside of marriage. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in what? Passion of lust. Like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As also, as we also forewarned you, and what? And testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness, which is what? Sanctification, which brings restriction to the enemy. Therefore, who, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the what? The Holy Spirit. Powerful. So sanctification is associated with restricted area. It's a restricted area to evil. First hmm. John chapter five. No trespassing. Time to learn so we don't get burned. We've been burned enough. And people are going to either... <laughs> if you're getting burned now, <laughs> you may get burned later. Amen? So let's stop getting burned. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. Is everybody there? All right. We know that whoever has been born of God does not sin. That doesn't mean you don't make a mistake, but sin doesn't reign. Amen? Amen. You, in fact, you desire not to sin. You do everything you can not to sin. You hate evil if you're really born of the Spirit. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, keeps himself, keeps himself what? Sanctified. Amen. And the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols which will open the doors. And I'm going to close at Psalm 16. Restricted areas. Psalm 16 and verse 7. Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Say it again. I have set the Lord always before me. That lets you know whether you have relationship or not. If the Lord is not before you in everything you do, in every decision, everywhere you go, then you better ask yourself whether well, I truly have a relationship or not. Does yeah. everybody understand that? Why? Well, he says, acknowledge me in all of your ways and I'll guide your path. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Verse 8 again. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be what? Moved or swayed or misled. Because you're looking at him now. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Blessings. Create the restricted areas in your life the enemy is trying to outwit us 
Amen? Stop being man pleasers Amen. and be a God pleaser. Amen. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray for each and every one here tonight, Lord, that the seed that you have released and this prophetic word that was being released would be imparted in everyone's being, in their soul, in their mind, in their will, and now all are part of their members, and that it would grow and bear fruit for your glory, that you, Holy Spirit, that you would take this seed and bring it to remembrance, that they may see, that they may hear, and that they may be followers of the truth, denying themselves, picking up their swords and following all the days of their life, that they may be a sign and wonder for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.